Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over 120 plus easy mounts to get. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so today we're going to be going over 120 plus mounts that we can get to pretty much pad out our mount collection in order to get to some of those higher end achievements. This will start off with some of the pretty obvious ones to actually pad out and then it will progressively get into things that we probably didn't think of and then ending on the last ones overall. That being said, let's just stop. Let's start with the trivial ones at first and then make our way up to the ones that we don't really have. So that being said, let's just jump into our first one at number one, which is the 47 mounts that you can pretty much get from your faction racial mounts. This will include Horde and Alliance as pers in perspective and as well as that the Pandarian mounts as well. That is where you'll be wanting to make a class trial and pretty much make a class trial if you don't have that race already. Go to their faction specific vendor which is typically in their faction zone and you'll be able to buy out all of those mounts. Now, for instance, if you are a Night Elf, you'll be wanting to head over to Stormwind, as kind of Teldrassil was kind of burnt down at the moment, you'll be wanting to buy that from there. But if you have a, but you can always use your time walking to go back to Teldrassil to buy them there if you so wish, but it's just a hell of a lot easier to go to like Stormwind or something. That being said, you're basically going to be wanting to make one of each, different type of race if you don't have it already so if you already have a night elf then you don't need to make a class trial on a night elf just make a class trial on the ones you actually need go to their specific vendors in their specific racial zones and capital cities so to speak and then buy out all of those mounts this should not cost you all that much and you can pretty much get it done pretty dang fast i remember when I actually had to do this by making a death knight on every single class and leveling them up before like class trials were a thing to get a hold of these things and overall yeah that took a lot more time so this one's a lot of an easier way of doing it just by making class trials and then just jumping on so overall that's the pretty standard bog standard one to get over and done with because that's 47 mounts you didn't have so then you're definitely going to get that albino drake straight up so that being said let's just jump over to our next one is it which is 11 mounts and that is from may francis within the dalaran vendor what you're going to be wanting to do here is basically you're going to need a little bit of gold what you're going to be wanting to do is go to may francis she is outside of the pet vendor or if you have your hearthstone set to dalaran you basically find her pretty much next to the horde area there is mounts in front of her so you shouldn't have that much of a problem the thing of note for her is she will sell you a load of different types of mounts this is 11 mounts in total as well as it provides you with the woolly tundra mammoth which also is a vendor based mount so if you don't have that you can get that already however the vendor values for this do scale with reputation so the higher reputation with the violet eye the the price will actually go down but to be honest the gold value for this isn't so high it's like impossible and if you are a goblin you will just get those deals regardless so maybe do that on a goblin if you're horde the next one of note is three mounts from uncle big pockets which is located within the kunlai summit and basically he will sell you another vendor mount along with two other mounts these are the three yak mounts and these are quite prevalent two of them will cost 3000 gold each whereas the other one will cost you 120,000 gold. One is a bit pushing it, so you may want to do some gold farming. Not to worry, I pretty much cover gold making pretty much all the time, so we can get to that 120k really easily. But aside from all of that, the mount in question is the transmogrification mount, based mount for farming, and that is the Grand Expedition Yak, 120k plus another two three k's which is 126 k in total so you, that's what you'll need to get to all three mounts from uncle big pockets but i'd save those two last if you don't have the required funds that being said let's move over to our next one which is an easy 13 mounts and that is the black war mounts this will require you to have 130 marks of honor either with horde and alliance so basically 
you're going to be wanting to get Black War mounts, you're going to need one Alliance character, one Horde character, because they have Black War mounts linked with both factions. You'll need 130 of these Marks of Honor in total, and overall, it'll cost you about 10 for each mount, which is kind of cheap, to be honest. That being said, if you do want to actually do this, then you're going to be spamming random battlegrounds for a little bit, but to be honest, to get 130 Marks of Honor, we should already still have quite a few Marks of Honor from the BFA expansion, as that was mainly PvP-based. And overall, I just managed to buy out quite a, a decent chunk, even without having to do any PvP. That being said, to gather up 130 marks shouldn't take you all that long of a time, as if you just spam Battlegrounds for a weekend, you can pretty much get those pretty dang fast. Uh, so from all of that, let's move over to our next one, number 5, for 4 mounts, which is the Temple of Ankaraj. By going over to the Temple of Ankaraj, don't get this confused with the Ruins of Ankaraj, you'll be wanting to go into the one where Cthulhu is. Basically, you'll be taking out all of the trash at the beginning up to into the first boss. Do not kill the first boss, however, as you will be locked to that instance and you will not be able to run out and reset the actual trash mobs. The first few should be easy to get hold of. These are the Karaji Battle Tanks. Before we continue, consider supporting the channel by getting Dallas Guide to Gold Making, coming as either ebook or paperback on Amazon. This covers all aspects of gold making and how best to optimize yourself to make gold now and into the future. The link is in the description down below. Thank you. Now back to the video. There are multiple different crystals that you can get. Three of them are quite prevalent, so you'll be able to get those in like literally a first run. And there is one that does take a little bit longer than all of the others, that is the Red Karaji Battle Tank. This also awards you with a feat of strength when you have that red one drop. It is also called Why Because Red. This is definitely something that is really easy to do to just get four mounts for your characters. Unfortunately, they are only mountable in the actual dungeon, in the actual raid, so Basically, we're using this to just pad out our mount collection in order to get those achievements a bit faster. That being said, let's just jump over to our next one for two other mounts, which is the Black and the Twilight Drake. These are a 100% drop chance from the Obsidian Sanctum in Dragon Blight. What you'll be wanting to do is run it on one character on 10 man and another character on 25 man, or if you don't have another character, you're going to have to wait a week. Aside from that, the 10 man drops the Black Drake, the 25 man drops the Twilight Drake, and they are 100%. All you have to do is run into the Obsidian Sanctum, take out Setharion, and basically just loot your mount. It's pretty that simple to get hold of two 100% mounts. Now, following on to the theme of 100% mounts is the Bronze Drake. Now, I've covered this on a few videos a while back, so let's make this a bit easier for everyone. Set it to heroic, do the dialogue quest introductionary for the culling of Strathome, which is in the Caverns of Time, burst through it, kill the mobs as fast as you can, help Arthas, and before you go and kill Melganus, turn left. Once you're there, all you have to do is kill that dude, subduing that bronze drake, that blonde dragonflight guy, and you'll be awarded with the mount at 100% drop chance. This is definitely an easy mount in order to get a hold of, and it takes you literally about 15 minutes if you really wanted to, along with the dialogue, so as soon as you get in. That being said, really easy mount to get a hold of, so let's move over to another easy mount, which is the Amani Battle Bear. This is where you'll be wanting to go over to Zul'Gurub, and pretty much all you have to do is take out all four of the main bosses before the sacrifice is complete. You are on a timer of 15 minutes at the beginning of Zul'Gurub, and every boss you defeat, you get five minutes. So make sure to take out every single one of the bosses, but make sure to take them out in a certain order. At the start, I tend to go for the bottom left, then the bottom right, then the top right, and then finally, the top left boss is the one that you kill last. This is because if all of the other priests are down, once you take out that last boss, all you have to do is speak to the troll in a cage. She will start smashing some pots, and it is a 100% drop chance of getting the Amani Battle Bear from this little sachet that drops on the ground after she smashes the third and final pot. So that's a really easy melt to get a hold of right there. 
Next mount on our list for the easy mounts to get a hold of is the Poseidus mount. Well, the reins of Poseidus to be more specific. We're actually going to be farming up the rare Poseidus, which is located in Bashir. What you're going to be wanting to do is go over to the Shimmering Expanse. There are four spawn locations within there for the actual rare to spawn. There is also one in the Abyssal Depth, which is also combined with the Ajara's Veil vale farm. That being said, all you have to do is pretty much just camp there. And I generally find that that rare spawns around about nine o'clock every single day on EU servers. So I tend to just park an alt there, log in at nine o'clock in the morning, and it's usually up. So I usually get that mount straight up. The funny thing for this is it's actually farmable, so you can just buy that one off the auction house if you have the gold funds available, but if you don't, then you don't have to worry. You can always just camp yourself there and you can pretty much get it in about a couple of days if you miss the respawn timer on one of those days. That being said, let's just jump over to another 100% mount, which is not Karosh for the Garn Night Howl. This is located within Frostfire Ridge, and basically what you'll be wanting to do is head over to Not Karosh. Now, Not Karosh is a mount that is a mount, is a rare that is in the area of Frostfire Ridge and is pretty easy to get to. This has a 20 minute respawn timer for this rare, so basically if it's down when you get there, um, just wait 20 minutes and you will get the mount a 100% drop chance. This is also obtainable to be bought off of the auction house as well and overall pretty easy to get a hold of. Personally I just buy off the auction house as it usually is around about 400 to 500 gold off the auction house which is nothing even though the mount looks pretty dang cool. So that being said let's jump over to our next one which is three mounts from a vendor in Nazmir called Gotham. He will sell you three toad mounts for 300 th 333,333 gold. This is relatively a million gold and if you don't have the gold funds, don't worry, it's only three mounts, but I wanted to add this on this list. Basically, got a million gold, you get three toad mounts that look pretty dang cool. I personally like the green one because it just looks the best to be honest. But other than that, it's just one of those things that if you want to get a hold of those mounts, then that's three extra mounts that you can get just by going over to Gotham in Nazmir. Following on to that, we do have another one, which is Shadowlands 100% mount, and that is the Wild Seed Cradle. This can be done by literally just getting the paste add-on or just making a macro and just putting the spawn locations for all of the different tools in Ardenweald. You'll be collecting a few of those tools. And once you have all of them in their specific areas from the waypoints, if you're using the TomTom add-on, I'll put a link in the description for the waypoints for you. This will take you around about five minutes to gather up all that stuff. You'll then have a gardener's kit, which you just have to hand in, and you'll be rewarded with the Wild Seed Cradle mount. It's one of the easiest Shadowlands mounts to get a hold of. It takes literally no time at all. I managed to get it in about 10 minutes, and that was with the travel time. That being said, let's just jump over to our next one, at, and that is the Red Flying Disc. Now, this mount is from the Law Walkers, and this is a reputation-esque mount that you can get a hold of. Now you're probably wondering, you have to get exalted with the Law Walkers. How are you supposed to do that? Well, the Law Walkers is actually one of the easiest reputation to get a hold of. To get your reputation up with the Law Walkers, all you have to do is find scrolls around the open world of Pandaria. And once you have collected all of them, you just need to hand them in. This will reward you with reputation with the Law Walkers. This will take you roughly about an hour in order to do. And, it, and by the end of it, you should be exalted. There is add-ons which you can use which is like handy notes for the scrolls which you can use and I would primarily recommend doing that because it just makes your life a hell of a lot easier when you're doing that and in an hour's worth of time you get a, a pretty okay looking mount it's, it doesn't look amazing but it's just another one to add out to your collection in pretty much no time at all it's pretty much 100% if you were willing to put in like an hour to get all of that reputation with the Law Walkers Alongside that, you do get a pretty cool looking tabard as well. So that's always that to go with that. Next is 20 mounts for crafted professions. These are crafted mounts that you can either buy off of the auction house 
and also some that are soul bound as well, so don't get too confused. One of the mounts in particular is from a recipe that has very low drop chance, so if you don't have the recipe, probably not worth your time in order to try and farm up that recipe, you'll be wasting quite a lot of time. That's for the Vial of the Sands with Alchemy. Vial of the Sands can be bought off of the auction house pretty damn easily, and Primarily, if you do have the recipe, we all know how to craft it. You can make a lot of gold from it as well. Usually one of my go-tos for making gold, but other than that, the Vial of the Sands mount, pretty easy to get a hold of, or auction house. Most crafting mounts are all auction house. The next one is blacksmithing. You can get the, the steel bound harness off of the auction house, or you can farm up the recipe from Tychondrius, which is within the night hold. All you have to do is defeat him, not on the LFR, at, with a blacksmith and you should get that recipe. Once you have that recipe, then all you've got to do is get up like 50 Bloods of Sargeras, which is the hardest part. The rest of the materials are relatively inexpensive. So other than that, you'll just be getting a load. You'll be able to get your st steel bound harness pretty dang easily. The next one for that is engineering, which has quite a lot of mounts, which is the Mecha Mogul Mark II, which I'd buy off the auction house as the recipe takes quite a long time to get a hold of. Turbocharged flying machine, I'd recommend just crafting that as that's relatively inexpensive along with the flying machine. If you want the Mechanist Chopper or the Mechano Hog, then I would do the Pit of Sauron for three hours. And that would be running the trash farm for the Pit of Sauron. Do it on Heroic so you can get yourself a hold of a battered hilt while you're there, make some gold while you're doing this. And if you do it without a tabard on, you'll get up your reputation up with the Alliance Vanguard. And in about three hours of 10 lockouts, so that's 30 runs, you'll be exalted with the Alliance Vanguard, giving you the recipe from that respective faction. And with, with that being said, you'll be able to craft that relatively expensively. It'll probably cost you around about 20 to 30,000 gold, depending on your server to actually do that. Primarily, you can always buy that off the auction house if you just have the gold to spare. Aside from that, you do have two other mounts, which is the depleted Kyperion rocket from Goblin Engineering, and with Gnomish Engineering, you have the Geosynchronous World Spinner. Those ones cost quite a lot of gold, as they cost 60,000 gold each, just baseline to craft, so you will be spending some amount of gold for the Orbs of Mystery. The other one of note is the Sky Golem mount, and that one can be done for an engineer on a daily cooldown for the Jarge Peculiar Energy Source, and you can also do this with Living Steel. Aside from that, this will just take 30 days in order to craft, or you could buy this pretty much inexpensively off the auction house if you have the gold to do so. And following on to our last one is the Gallywex ATV. I'm not reading it the other way around. I just say Gallywex because we know it's backwards for that. But that mount can just be bought off the auction house for like 10,000 gold at the moment, I believe the average is. So just worth buying it off the auction house. But that's a pretty cool mount to actually have. So from that, we do have another one, which is the dual crafting mounts, which is the Jade, Ruby, Sapphire, and Stunstone Panther, as well as the Jeweled Onyx Panther. This will require you to get your reputation up with the Order of the Cloud Serpent, and this can be pretty much brute forced by farming up Onyx Eggs, which there are is a TomTom Tom add-on for that. Just type in Onyx Egg into your Curse Forge, and it should pop up for you right there. Aside from all of that, it just takes probably a log for like two to three hours and you should have your reputation with the Order of the Cloud Serpent, providing you've done your introductionary quest for that. Once you are there and you've gathered up all of those eggs, just hand them in as they are completely, you can do that infinitely into your max and then you'll get all those recipes to craft those mounts. Failing that, if you're on a higher pop server, the mounts are usually really competitive, so it's well probably cheaper to just buy the mounts. So that's something you may want to check out going forward. But other than that, I do like completing reputations and getting max with them. So yeah, if you are an, a completionist like me on that front, then I would highly recommend just doing that straight up. The next one is leather working, and that is for the Great Northern Elderhorn and the Dust Main Firewolf. 
These ones can be done from Wad and Legion respectively. Very easy to get a hold of. You basically just have to follow the quest chains for both of them and unlock them just by training your leather working and then just crafting those. Those two are soul bound so you cannot buy those off the auction house which makes it a little bit annoying to get a hold of. The other one is tailoring for creeping carpet which is just an easy learn and you have three other carpet mounts which are pretty much all of them are soul bound which is the flying carpet, the frost the frosty flying carpet and the magnificent flying carpet. The only one that can be bought off the auction house which is usually around about 500 gold is the flying carpet so if you want to just dodge a bullet off crafting just buy that. But other than that, that is pretty much all of the crafted 20 mounts that you can get a hold of. So let's move into another five mounts which you can farm and also get off the auction house. These are the Captured Dune Scavenger, the Reigns of the Terrified Pack Mule, the Blood Feaster, Golden Mane Reigns, and the Nashatar Blood Serpent. The, these mounts are BFA specific. You'll be able to farm these up in the open world. So like the Captured Dune Scavenger comes from Voldoon, Terrified Pack Mule comes from Drustvar, the Blood Feaster comes from Nazmir, Golden Mane Reigns comes from Storm Storm Valley. Basically, I have covered a load of these farms in the past and this is where you'll want to go to those zones specifically to farm up those mounts. They have a low drop chance. I usually get one every couple, couple of hours, give or take my RNG luck. But other than that, you can always pay a massively pretty penny for those mounts on the auction house, but I'd prefer to farm those than spend that gold. Other than that, the Najatar Blood Serpent is the only one as this requires you to get a hold of the Abyssal Crystals, which can be got a hold of from Stormstone Valley. And this is from like the cultists. They have a chance of dropping them. You need 20 of those, turn them into its relatively item, follow the chain, and then you'll get your Najatar Blood Serpent. It's really dang simple. And at this moment in time, the prices of those crystals have gone up. So it's probably well worth your time just holding, just farming them up yourself. And if you get more than what you need, you can just sell those on the auction house as people are paying a pretty penny for them. The next one of note is two mounts and that is for Horde and Alliance and that is the Venom Hide Ravisol and the Frost Saber mount. This can be done by either going to Unguru Crater for the Ravisol and Winter Spring for the Frost Saber. This is for Horde and Alliance respectively. So you only need to do this once though, however. And say you are Alliance and you went to Winter Spring. You, all you have to do is go over to the Cubs at, or on the outside of the actual zone and speak to the quest giver. You need to do 20 days of daily pet questing. So one quest per day for 20 days. You'll be rewarded with the Frost Saber. And once you've completed that on one faction, it will unlock it automatically for the other faction as well. So you get two mounts for the price of one which is kind of nice. Now the next one is one mount and that is a really easy one to get a hold of and that is the Woolly Mammoth from Wintergrasp. This will cost you a few marks of honor in order to get a hold of and overall it's just one of those ones where if you've been farming up Black War mounts and you've got a little left over, go to Wintergrasp. If your guys are in control of Wintergrasp, you can just buy that mount straight up from the vendor, the, the Woolly Mammoth, which is basically is the Tundra Willy Mammoth just unskinned with all of the uh, vendors and stuff so it looks pretty cool to be honest. And so from all of that let's move on to our next one which is the Wad Mounts and that is four, four Wad Mounts which is the Champion's Tread Blade, the Wither Hide Cliff Stomper, the Rock Tusk Battle Boar and the Moss Hide River Wallow. These mounts are vendor mounts locked behind a reputation. The, these reputations can either be brute forced with the medallions of the Legion or just by doing your questing in WAD. And most people generally these days have their reputation with WAD, either to get their flying or just in general, they just played their way through. You can just brute force this if you are a little bit off with medallions of the Legion, which will cost you a little bit more gold. But over and other than that, you can pretty much get this done pretty dang fast, especially if you just do all of the bonus quests, bonus objectives, all of the quests in those areas and do all of the campaigns. This will unlock a load of achievements for you and it will give you a load of the mounts once you've reached a cer these certain levels with those respective factions. 
And so from all of that, let's just jump on to our next one, which is the Pale High Dial Horn, which is either in a vendor in Boralus or Zandalar. This per the vendor is located next to the Black Market Auction House, which has not gone away in Boralus or Zandalar. And basically, you all, this one will cost you the most amount of gold at this moment in time, as the Brutosaur obviously got Brutosaur does not actually get sold anymore. It's the same person that sells that. Uh, the Pale High Diahorn sells for 500,000 gold, so if you want that mount, you're gonna have to pay half a million gold for that mount. But yeah, <laughs> that's why I've been putting it off, to be honest, because I can think of better ways to put my gold into things. But um, aside from that, the Pale High Diahorn, if you are a collectionist for all of that stuff right there. And last, but it's three more mounts, which is your Primal Raptor mounts, from the Isle of Giants. This is where you'll be running around the area in a circular fashion, as you would if you were farming it. Bring a Skinner, you will increase some gold, make some gold while you're at it, and you'll be rewarded with a Primal Egg. This will take three days to hatch, and will give you a Primal Raptor of three different variety colors. This will provide you with a load with three different type of Primal Raptor mounts within a span of nine days, and then all you have to do there is just, it's just a waiting game once you've got your Primal Egg. So log on one day, farm it up until you get a Primal Egg, log out, come back three days later, hatch it, see if you get the mount, and then run around again, do that again, and then rinse and repeat until you've completed. And by that time, you should have 9,999 giant dinosaur bones, in which you can then trade them into the cave on the far left-hand side of the island for an additional fourth mount which is the bone white primal raptor as i'm just adding this one onto the end as pretty much you you shouldn't have a problem as of then other than that guys that is pretty much my list and pick for 120 plus easy mounts that you can get a hold of to pad out your characters in the game other than that guys have a wonderful rest of the day and i shall see you in the next video which will be soon